Hey guys, a video today, we're going to put the quarter panels on, we're going to put the rear tail section on the car. Let me turn the camera around, show you where we're at, what we're going to do. So the wheel wells over here, they've got a couple screws and you can see the one screw there and then there's another one down over there holding them onto the sides. They come that way from Dynacorn, but they're not set properly. So you got to set your quarter panel and once you set your quarter panel where you want it, you got to let it drop and float so it will be a nice tight seal up in here when you go to weld it. So what I did is I put the quarter panel on the car and I adjusted it to where I'm happy with it. I took the screws out of the inner wheel well and let it drop down up until so it's nice and tight and snug up in here. Hopefully that makes sense. That way now it's, I can weld it up on my wheel lip. Before the way it came from Dynacorn, there was about a half inch gap from this quarter panel to the inside of that wheel lip. And you'd never get them to weld together. So now up in there, you can get a, a pair of pliers up in there and, and pinch weld that. I'm going to take the quarter off and I'm going to weld that wheel well in. So now I'm making my new clamping in the new location where it's going to be and then I'll weld it. So on the inner wheel well, there's going to be extra hair that we're going to have to trim. So I'm put, taking a line and I'm just marking it like that on both sides of the wheel well. So when I take the, this off, I know where I need to drill my holes for my plug welds. Also down here, I'm gonna have my holes for the plug welds here. And then this flap here is gonna, is gonna get the welded in there as well. So we'll probably have a couple plug welds in this. We'll take that off and just check that. What we're going to do now is, since we're going to weld this, we're going to separate it from the inner wheel well. We don't need that anymore. That was just to help us to mock everything up. If you were wondering what this tape was on here, this was to remind me to weld before the quarter panels are installed. So basically, what I just did inside the car is I put the quarter panels on the car, and then I took the screws off that were originally on here, let it drop down so this lip would rest inside the quarter panel lip. So when I weld those two together, they're nice and tight and close together. So I just did my new screws here and here. Uh, those are my reference screws, so I'll put those back in when I go to tack weld it. But what I'm doing now is I'm gonna take out the inner wheel well, because we don't need that anymore. We're going to put uh, tubs in this car. So that's coming out. All right, since we're getting ready to weld this in, we're going to go and make our marks. You got to be careful where you're going to weld it. Got a big open space here. We don't want to drill holes there, but basically we're going to weld to this inner lip of the inner rocker panel. So that's what I'm going to set this up here so I can see where that lip is. And I'll make my mark. So I'm going to have my, my welds here on the inner lip of the rocker panel and then I'm going to go over here to this side here. We're going to clean this off, take all the undercoating and everything off of that. You can see my line where those lines are, uh, those are where our plug weld holes are going to be. The screw holes, we'll just weld those shut, They're, that's no big deal at all. Uh, and then we'll, we'll plug weld the panel on right up in here. So now the wheelhouse is in. It's welded in across the top. I got some primer in there to protect the welds. This has not been welded yet. And this has not been welded. But all the plug welds are there and it's mo slightly movable in case I need to adjust it with the quarter panel. We're going to put that on now. 
Before we can put the quarters on the car for the last time, we need to put the doors on the car. I find it easier to put the hinges onto the door frame before putting the door on. It makes it easier for the in those inside pieces that keep falling down in the cowl. Take your time in getting the door to fit the way you want it um, because we're going to use the door to line up the quarter panel. And if you see, I got a piece of cardboard resting probably in the middle of the door. That piece of cardboard is helping me to give a gap, a consistent gap across the bottom of the door. That's just the way I start um, hanging the door. It's a long process to get it to fit properly. There's a lot of adjustments and a lot of different angles. So, so take your time and make sure you're happy with the fit before you continue on with anything else. This is the passenger side quarter panel. I'm going to show you how we're going to prep it and make all the holes for the plug welds and then how we fit it onto the car. Here's the quarter panel. We're getting ready to put this on the car. So you can see the plug welds. You saw me do the, use the tool to put all the plug welds in it. Put the plug welds down the bottom, up in the wheel well, along the back, and then along the drip rail and the top where it's gonna go. So now we're just gonna put it on the car. As I'm hanging the quarter panels, I'm just making sure that everything lines up with the marks that I have on the quarter panel and I'm happy with the fit and I'm happy where everything is being secured. It's a time consuming process, so just take your time, make sure you're happy with everything, the way, the way you're putting it together and where everything is fitting, because this is the final time that we're going to put it together to weld it. The quarter panels are on, the center section is on, and I just tacked, tack well to keep everything tight. I'm going to put the trunk on, the trunk hinges and the lid, that way I can adjust if there's any minor adjustment I need to side to side. I've got the trunk lid on and I want to show you the lines and how it fits. Um, so I had to work very hard to get these lines to get as straight as they are. Uh, and I'm going to explain a couple of different things that I had to do. So this is the line going straight down. 
And then this is the line on the, the driver's side We're going up. But I want to explain a problem that I was having and probably a problem that a lot of you are having when you do these conversions. So the side panels went on and then the quarter panels go on. The inner structure here gets put in as well. And then the inner structure kind of dictates where this is going to sit, this piece, where it's going to sit. So you have to fine tune that to get the uh, transition piece flush right here. So this side fit very well, the gap. And you can see that I have it tack welded now. You can see that. Um, you'll see a lot of the time, you'll see a lot of lines all over the car and marks. These, I, I do these lines to make sure that things line back up. I've got these lines here to correspond with the line up there. So I'm, I'm measuring my measurements here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys what my measurements here are in just a few minutes, a little bit later, but I wanna talk about the trunk first. And again, I got my line here to there. And I measured out to make sure I'm getting consistent measurements. So I, I forget what this was, but I think this was four inches out. I'll explain that in a second. And the same up top. And that's to give my, my measurement here to make sure that this is sitting square. One of the first problems that I had was with this piece right here. And the way it fit and the way it came from Dynacorn, this piece came in and kind of went like that. So you got your, you kind of got your turn and then it went out a little bit. And what that did, it makes you want to kind of, it makes you want to put this piece at the end of that. I hope I'm making sense to you. But this piece here actually sat further down here. So what the natural tendency to do is to take this piece and move it down. And you can see these lines were actually straight across at one point. And that's when this had this little kind of turn right here. So what I did is I folded that metal up under there and just tapped it in and bent that down just a little bit. We're gonna metal finish that and, and you're never gonna notice it because it's gonna be welded. But what that did, it, that and then the, the piece underneath, I was able to slide this up. I don't know, I guess you can see it's about a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch, something like that. But when I measured from there to there on this side, it was longer than there to there on that side. And it was not sitting square. So I knew my measure, I knew this had to move for the window opening. Prior to that, when I tried to align everything and put the trunk on the car, the trunk had to sit further back here. So this gap, was getting affected and then this gap right here on the back side of the car was very very tight right here in the corner and again that's because the trunk instead of sitting straight was tilted like this so the the gap was not straight it was sitting like that so by fixing that corner moving that piece up gave the trunk lid a chance to go up a little further I was able to get the top section to fit well because obviously you're just you're pulling the quarters in tight to this piece here you don't have any a whole lot of options they got to be tight on both sides that dictates your opening here i was having a heck of a time trying to get the trunk lid to fit the car because basically and it did it on both sides but this side was more dramatic it literally the quarter panel came down and then went in like this the trunk lid was hitting this corner, it wouldn't even close. And then you're, and it was happening on the other side as well. This corner here was hitting the trunk lid. And as you would come down, it would get tighter, tighter, tighter. And it was hitting right here. I had that problem on both sides. And I wanted to point that out to you guys as you're doing this and putting these cars together. You can use whatever you need to use. I just happen to have an old two by four and a scissor jack. I put the 2x4 
up against the edge of the other side of the car and then the scissor jack, I expanded it until I was able to get it in snug and then just push it down and it'll actually stay where it needs to be. With that, I was able to adjust and move effectively pushing the ends of the quarters out, um, which fixed my gap. So I, basically I would do it and keep doing it until I got the gap that I wanted on either side. Now one thing that started to happen with this side, because I was uh, working hard to get this gap to, to, to get where I needed it, it started to want to push the quarter panel up. So if you, let me get a little bit closer here so you can see what I'm talking about. So effectively you got to also keep an eye on the distance between this piece here and this little kind of fold on the rear valance rear tail panel what was happening it was wanting to push this up so i had to when i got it to where i wanted i had it marked with a piece of tape i had to push it back down and crimp it with a pair of ice grips so i would push that down crimp it where i wanted it and then put my screws in it to make it fit that was the one problem i had with that but effectively you want to kind of have the same gap I'm trying to use something else on my finger but you want the same gap consistently down through here that you have on the other side. You want both sides to match. So it's a time consuming. It took me a while to do this, but I took my time. We don't want to damage anything. And I've got a flat surface here, so it's not damaging anything. It's just pushing it back and giving me the mechanical pressure that I need to, to, to uh, fasten this. So this is one problem that I had and I definitely wanted to point it out to you guys because when I first came across it, I was like, oh crap, but we're using aftermarket parts. Um, I know sometimes things are a bear to get them to fit, but then you got to adapt and overcome and, and, and think about why they're not fitting. So everything else is, is fastened, tacked, weld, screwed in or whatever we need to do. This was the biggest hurdle that I had to overcome. And basically this whole thing it, it's connected down the bottom it's connected in the wheelhouse so it's all drawn down it's connected and screwed into the wheel well that we we uh we fit and welded earlier in the video so everything is snug where it needs to be this was the biggest challenge that i had dealing with the quarter panel issue and then the other thing was to just make sure when you're forcing things and bending things, you don't want to distort anything else. So I kept putting my level across here, across the tail panel to make sure that nothing got out of whack with that as well. And basically just take the pressure off of it and pull it up and it pops right out. All right, so now we're gonna put the filler panel in on the passenger side. So I've got it here, and I've already gone and made my marks. I've already trimmed it here because this was all just crooked. Um, where, where you see my marks, I'm gonna drill those out. And then this part here needs to be flush up here. So this is just gonna get bent down when we put that in. So I'm gonna make the holes here with the hole punch and a drill, and we'll get started. I'm using a file to deburr the bottom side where I drilled the holes. You always got to remember to do that because those metal filings will push it out and cause a small gap. I'm making my mark here so I know where I need what the amount of black material that I, or paint that I need to remove from here so it's bare metal.
Here I'm using a weld through primer to protect the bare metal. It dries very quickly, but it does help protect the bare metal in between the overlap. Now with everything tack welded in place, I'm going to just double check and triple check and make sure that the trunk lid fits and the gap has not changed before I go through and do the final welds. Now this upper section here, I'm just tapping that down and folding it over. I'm turning my attention to the rear valance panel and getting that uh, welded in place as well. Now I'm starting to focus in on the lower quarter panels and the back section of the quarter panel. Here I'm working on the lower quarter panel and there's a lip from the inside tail pan that comes down. It's always longer than the quarter panel, so you need to trim that. The outside quarter panel has a small groove in it where it folds over slightly. I'm trying to get that same groove on the inside of the tail pan that drops down so I can weld that. This section of the tail panel here always sticks out further than it needs to. And on both sides here, I'm grinding them down enough for the rear valance panel to sit flush. If these are sticking out and protruding too far, it's gonna push the rear valance panel out and you'll never get it to sit flush with the quarter panels. I'm grinding down the temporary spot welds on the lower tail panel because I want to mock up the entire back section. I want to put the end caps on, I want to put the bumper on, and I want to put the lower valance on to verify everything fits right before I do my final welds. Once I'm happy with the fit and everything looks as, as I want it, I'll go back, take it all off, and then I'll weld everything for the last time. Now that I'm happy with the fit, it's time to start welding it all together. Here I'm welding in the front of the quarter panel where it meets the opening to the door.
Both of the inner vents need to be welded to the inner frame and that's what I'm doing here on the driver's side. Now that that's completed, um, moving up to the top part of the quarter panel where it meets the frame and the roof will overlap. This is the driver side inner wheelhouse and I'm welding it to the outer rocker right now and then I'll be welding it to the inner rocker as well. Now here's the rear window measurements. This mark here, it's four inches over, four inches over from the top. And then this is 33 and a half inches from top to bottom, 33 and a half inches. Going from here is 42 and an eighth. Midway up across from the outside edge is 44 and one quarter. And the last one is 45 and three quarters. And that gives you the opening measurements for the rear window. Quarters are on the car, the doors are on the car. We welded the tail section in the car. The only thing that's left to do is to put the drip rails and roof panel on the car, which we will do in the next video.